a size 14 green drake on a CS or on a C49S. On the counter Yeah. Just thought I'd crush it. <laughs> You're awesome. You don't have to, you've always been my hero. <laughs> So, using uh, Daiichi, which I believe is a, I don't remember, I think it was a 14. So, step one, extended body, put a thread in the, or a needle into the vise, a couple wraps, thank you. Just to get it started, I pulled out the expensive tailing material today. Ooh. Is it tape rough? Yep. It comes with uh, different thicknesses, which works perfectly. You can use it in different size hooks. And then there's a, a secret bonus later that I didn't figure out until I tied quite a handful of them. Oh, three or so. He's an active liar right So when I tie these in, I leave about a quarter inch or so hanging out in front of this really sharp point on the needle. Just give it a couple wraps. Hey? Need to put the light on the other side. Perfect. Now you have to tie with one hand. <laughs> yeah. It's bad enough with two. <laughs> so I try to get the tails to set so there's one at either side of the, the needle. It just kind of makes it a little bit easier. But in the end, that's more fussy than anything. Can we do that again? That's <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Is that the special surprise you're talking that about? That was it. It's getting better here. Yeah. Hey. It's just because I wanted to demonstrate how well this works for threading the bobbin. Whoever sweeps the floor will have to look for those later. <laughs> you have. I just wanted to make sure it was ingrained because it's important. <laughs> now I have some two millimeter square post in chartreuse. And it's handy because it's already pre sliced. And for whatever reason, there's already a piece cut off here the proper length, which is one <laughs> centimeter. And I take and just on the very end of the needle, on the very end of the foam. With the tails on either side. Kettle the boiler. Awesome. And this is handy because it uh, helps sort of sometimes stop you from poking your finger. You could always take the sharp off the needle. Well, you know, I thought about that. 
then it wouldn't be a deal. Well, it wouldn't be as much fun. I like to live a little dangerously sometimes. So generally, before we get to the foam step, we like to put the, the ribbing on, which is chartreuse. What kind of wire is that? It's thread. Oh, it's thread. Okay. Yeah. And you just bind the foam down to the thickness that you want. You can knock it right down if you want. I try not to. I try to get it so that it's thinner towards the tail and then thicker towards the body. But ultimately, it ends up being about the same all the way through. Then, superfly, dry dubbing. And a light olive. And very sparsely, it doesn't have to be all that thick. And I suspect with using the foam, you could probably skip this step if you were more of a quick tire like Roy is, because he likes only a few. <laughs> but I like the color better than chartreuse. I just picked the foam for the flotation. Reverse wrap some ribbing. Whip finish. Pull it all together. <laughs> no, I broke that off. <laughs> One of the first times that I allowed it to bleed me. <coughs> okay, so you want to get this off here without pulling your tails out. <laughs> yep. Put that out of the way so we don't lose it. And we end up with something that looks generally very small. Can you see that? Oh, you can. Awesome. So, now you grab it towards the body end, and you can slide the tails up and down to adjust the length that you want. Okay. Which I usually do about the same length. I guess this would be called thorax. Abdomen, there you go. Thorax is at the other end. Thanks for your help. Keep me on track here because I need it. And they're all found in the bush where the thorax is. Yeah. You were watching TV too? Yeah, I didn't watch that though. Okay, so roughly the same length as the body. Take them, 
spread them apart. Like thus. And a dab of super glue right in there. adjustment which worked so yay and then just squeeze it shut and get them get them spread out the way they're supposed to be and then do your best to glue your fingers together and yeah I know me too and then you can tell when it's set because it doesn't come off so you just kind of pull it off and it's good to go <laughs> All right, so that's that part. Now I threw the hook somewhere. Check under your scissors. <coughs> Thought I'd stuck it into the cork, but I guess I didn't, just because. Mm -hmm. well, fortunately enough, I brought spares. <laughs> That sounds like way more fun than jamming that needle up under my fingernail, I'm thinking. Because <laughs> I can tell you about that needle going up under the fingernail. You know what's better than that? It's lighting that on fire. Oh, Jesus, Dave. Maybe they could have got it out that way instead of doing it at all. Yeah. Just let it burn down and chop your screen. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Thread underbody. Well, that didn't take long for me to bore you. <laughs> I need to go back. The way these hooks are, they got a f they're flat for a millimeter or so, and then they start in the bend, and I usually just go to where the bend starts. And you take this fancy thing that you just built, and the way the foam went on, uh, the tails are sitting on this edge right along here, and I tie it in so that that edge is so that edge is so this edge is towards the top. If you put it this way, they're on the the bottom. So I always try and put it with the foam down and tails up, and the excess tails up. Why is that, John? I'll show you. You ever seen a mayfly dragging his tails in the water? <coughs> after a hard day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figure its only purpose is to have sex and die. Like a lot of boys. <laughs> okay. So now, here's the purpose of the glue and tying those on that way. You take the excess that you left out the front after you adjusted, and you just give it a little pull. Oh, oh nice. Oh, neat. Hmm. Out my finger, he says. That yeah. So cool. And it you gives you don't that. Pull too hard. Yeah. Sometimes one will pull a little harder than the other, and it goes a little crooked, but I don't worry about it too much. The fish don't either. No. In fact, they probably like it better that way. Gives you your natural bend. I saw some different, there were some discussions on this style uh, that Terry was talking about and some other people, and they didn't want to tie them because they took too long, and I seem to be a sucker for flies that take a while to tie. We've done this yeah, especially since I was playing with the George Grants for a while. So I Sort of listened to that, and from surfing around, I saw different flies, and I just kind of put this one together. And then I couldn't figure out what to do with the wing, so I 
was digging through my stuff and I found I had this winging material in this wing cutter set, so I thought, let's see why I bought this. So there's a fold right here. I know you can't see, but the material's folded over, so there's a crease, and I'm just cutting it in the crease so you end up doing both wings at the same time. And they're attached. If it all works. And it did, so yay. <laughs> Fold it over the thread. And mount them wherever it makes you excited. And they kind of twist around and do funny things on you, but. Again, I don't think the fish get too tense about it. And while I was digging through the boxes, does that help me find this fancy little set of wing cutters that I got 100 years ago? I found some other toys that I bought and haven't really used yet. And that was from Mr. Predagene when he came to visit. So, I thought... I'm at least take it out of the package. <laughs> well, actually, I keep it all stored in there, so there's too many pieces. So, I thought, let's try this. Now, I went shopping for the CDC and his price point is a little bit um, higher than some of the competitions however once you get home and start going through the packs you find, out why. you find out why the other ones are a lot sparser the barbs are a lot shorter and yet there were and the feathers themselves were quite a bit shorter and you couldn't even get them into the small bench without using wire or whatever and of course these ones are quite a bit longer so okay well I think you've all seen the Petagene bench in action so I don't need to show you that trim off the stem Dubbing loop, two around the hook, one around the loop. Hey, one around the loop. Yeah, around the link. That works. And this stuff really likes to fly around the CDC. See if he was really finished on that he split. <laughs> well, I don't have any his yet. I saw some, but he's in a UTC, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, UTC splits. It splits everywhere. <coughs> I like using the dub and loops. So. Yeah. Not stronger. It's amazing though the rubbery vices pouch out. Yeah. <coughs> you can use it too if you like. Makes me dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Just to show you, I know how. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I think that's what it is. Both of my voices are rotary. I get seasick after a while. <laughs> <laughs>
It's hard to tell which is spinning. Between the wings? Yeah. I only go once between the wings. It seems to hold them up proper. Yeah. The other reason I kind of don't use the uh, rotating feature when you're doing this part is trying to pull this back at the same time. It doesn't work for me. It's too quick. I'm not that coordinated. Yeah, I like them like that. What size hook is that? This is 14. <coughs> I said flat, not a green <laughs> Well, I, you know, it just is what it is because that's what I thought it looked like, and, and that works. There was no real pattern. Like I said, I just saw a bunch of these, and remember they had all kinds of fun stuff, so. That's what I put together. Well, I went. These ones are a little smaller. I was tying them bigger. I tied them in brown. And someone suggested I should go smaller, so I did. That's it. 